Welcome to Electron Line. Now we're going to try to find the resistance of a truncated cone. The resistance has uniform resistivity, but look at the shape. It has a radius of R1 at the front and a radius of R2 at the back, and it has a length of L. Let's try to find the resistance of this object. Well, first of all, to make things easier, I think we want to line this up on a XY coordinate system. So let's imagine that this here is the Y axis and that this here is the X axis going right through the middle of the cone. So there's the X axis. And now we're going to try and find the equation describing the top end of this truncated cone. Remember, this is three dimensional here. And you can see that this would be something like Y equals MX plus B m being the slope of the line and b being the y-intercept. You can see the y-intercept would be equal to r1 and the slope would be, well, the slope m is equal to the rise over the run. So rise over the run, Oop. run, there we go, which is equal to the change in y over the change in x. And how much does y change? Well, y changes from r2 to r1, so it would be r2 minus r1, that would be the change in y, and the change in x is simply the length of the truncated uh, cone. Then we can plug in the equation that y is equal to r2 minus r1 over L, that would be the slope, times x plus r1, which would be the y-intercept. Okay, now I think we're ready to go ahead and find the resistance. What we're going to do is we're going to take a small little slice, Oop, not a very straight slice, but imagine a small little slice like this, there we go. That has a thickness dx and a radius y. So the radius of this would be y. And of course y is related to x with this equation right here. And the resistance of that small little slice, since it's so thin, we can then see that the radius doesn't really change over the small little displacement dx. We can say that the small little resistance dr is equal to, remember the equation for resistance, r, is equal to the resistivity times the length over the cross-sectional area. So using that for the equation over here, dr is going to be the resistivity, which is a constant, times the length, which is going to be a dx, divided by the area. Now what is the area of this little section here? It's a circle, so it would be pi r squared. In this case, r is y, so it would be pi times y squared. Now, of course, I can't have a y and a dx in the same equation. So I want to somehow change the y to what y is equal to. And we could probably go ahead and change it to this equation right here. So this can be written as the, uh, rho, which is the resistivity, times dx. And dx, of course, is this, divided by pi times y squared. And y squared is this quantity right here. So to make it easy, I'm going to just write mx plus R1, so M represents R2 minus R1 over L to make it a little bit easier to see. So it would be M times X plus R1 quantity squared, so that is equal to Y squared. So DX over pi Y squared, and I changed Y to an X variable right there. And I think now we can go ahead and integrate that. So R is going to be equal to the integral of all the little DRs, and we're going to integrate from, well, let's see. My variable is going to be x, so x from 0 to the length. So from 0 to the length L, and that is equal to the constants here are the resistivity divided by pi, and then we're going to integrate from 0 to L dx times, I'm going to bring this to the numerator with a negative uh, exponent, so mx plus r1 to the minus 2 power. Okay. Do I need a differential? And the answer is yes. I have, say, u to the minus 2, I need a du, and a du would be the differential what's inside, which is an m times dx. So I'm missing an m, let me use red for that. I'm missing an m, and so I have to divide by m over here, so that I cancel that out. So now I have a m times dx, which is differential what's inside the brackets. I can now go ahead and integrate this. So this is equal to r, oh, not r, is equal to rho divided by pi times m times the quantity. If I integrate this, I get I add one to the exponent, divide by the new exponent. So this would be mx plus r1 divided uh, raised to the minus one power divided by the new exponent. And I'm going to evaluate that from zero to l. 
All right, that means I'm going to put the negative over here, and I'm going to write as 1 over, so this is equal to a negative, the resistivity, pi times m, times the quantity, 1 over mx plus r1 from 0 to l. Hey, I can now go ahead and plug in the upper limit, then subtract when I plug in the lower limit and see what I get. So let me come over here where I have a little bit more room. All right, so this is minus resistivity pi times m times, okay, let's plug in the upper limit. So we get 1 over, now I'm going to resubstitute what I have for m. Remember, m was equal to this quantity right here. So that would be m, which is um, R2 minus R1 over L, that is M, times X when I substitute L, so I get L right there, plus R1, R1, there we go, that's when I plug in the upper limit, Oop. minus when I plug in the lower limit, when I plug in a zero for here, the X disappears, I sim simply end up with 1 over R1. Okay, the reason why I substituted back for my m is that I realize here that my l's will cancel out. And here I have 1 over r2 minus r1 plus r1, the r1's will cancel out, so this becomes equal to minus the resistivity times pi times m, I'll leave m there for now to make it simpler, times the quantity 1 over, this would be r2, r1 minus r1, so that cancels out, so this is 1 over r2 minus 1 over r1. Okay, now notice we have a negative here. Do we need that negative? Well, R2 is a bigger number than R1, so 1 over a bigger number is smaller than 1 over a smaller number. So this quantity here would be negative. So when we apply this negative here, we can switch that around and make everything positive. So this is equal to the resistivity divided by pi times m times the quantity 1 over R1 minus 1 over R2. Now we can probably go ahead and let's see here, probably multiply that out, put it over the same common denominator, substitute in for m, and let me change this direction a little bit here because I need my room. All right, I'm going to substitute for m here, I'm going to write this over common denominator. So this is equal to density divided by pi times, and m can be written as r2 minus r1 over l, in the denominator, times, notice if I put this on the same common denominator, I end up with R2 minus R1 over, so R2 minus R1 over R1 times R2. And then notice that this will cancel out with that, and the L will go to the numerator, and so when I do this, and I do this, I can now write this as the resistivity times L divided by pi times R1 times R2, and that would be the resistance of that truncated cone. Now, how do we know that we're correct? Well, in the limit, let's say that R1 becomes equal to R2, so it's simply a cylinder, and if it's a cylinder, we would have the resistance equals to the resistivity times the length divided by the area, and the area would be pi R squared, so if R1 and R2 were the same, the denominator would be pi R squared, and the numerator would be resistivity times the length, and it would revert back to our simple equation. So it looks like this is probably correct. So, quickly again, what did we do? Well, we want a little slice. To get a little slice, we know that the area of the slice is pi Y squared, the thickness of dx, so that would be the resistivity of a little slice, which is right here, dr, that would be a little slice. We need a relationship between Y and X, we do that by using the equation y equals mx plus b. m is simply the difference in the radii divided by the length. b is simply the radius of r1. Then we can integrate that because now we have a common um, variable in, the, in x. And then once we integrate, plug in the limits and revert back to where we have m equals to r2 minus r1 over l, we get the correct answer. And that's how we do that.